All right, here we go. So, okay, could you close, please, all the way close? All right, uh, I want to take a look at compound inequalities today. Compound inequalities. So, let's see here. Where is Hold that thought for just a second. Okay, so let's fill in some blanks here. Compound inequalities. Who wants to give me a definition of compound inequalities? When we do anything that we call compound anything in math means what? I don't know. More than one together. Okay, that's it, right? So compound would just be compound inequalities would be two. I guess you could have more than two potentially, but that'd be weird. It's almost, it's going to be two for us, but we'll say two or more inequalities written together. Okay? So let's take, for example, something like this. Okay, now that represents two separate inequalities. How would you say that? How would you say that? X. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So which one is it going to be? Let's, let's, let's take a... Okay, so let's let's see here. Oh, let, let's, let, let, let's take an example here. So what if you are, raise your hand if you are taller than six feet. Okay. <laughs> raise your hand if you are shorter than 5'10". Okay, so then raise your hand if you are, this is important, raise your hand if you are taller than six feet Actually, hang on. If you're taller than six feet, do it again. Raise your hand if you're taller than six feet. If you are shorter than six feet, raise your hand. Okay, raise your hand if you are taller than six feet or shorter than six feet. Just raise your hand. No, no, hang on. I'll say it again. Raise your hand if you are taller than six feet or shorter than six feet. All hands should be up, right? Okay, now raise your hand if you are taller than six feet. And shorter than six feet. So it's or, isn't it? Yes. Right. So it's an or statement. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what? Are, so let's take these one at a time. Let's look at the. Let's look at the inequality on the left. How would I say this? X is less than negative four. X is less than or equal. Less than or equal to. Agree. Yeah. yeah, about the one on the right. Whoa. Okay, so then if we're talking about this compound inequality, we're going to join those two inequalities with the word or. But we don't write the word or in math. I think they might do it on here, but I don't want you no, to. No, they have used use a symbol. They use a symbol, okay. So, so we would join those. We would say x is less than... Less than or equal to negative 4, or, there's our or symbol, right? That's the logical or symbol, or x is greater than 1, okay? So an easy way, now you guys, it's this is just a little trick if you're, I mean, really I don't like you just remember little facts and tricks like this, but this is, this is a quick one that's kind of useful sometimes. It's better to think about the concepts. But when you graph an OR inequality, it's like someone's rowing a boat towards you. And those are the ORs on the boat, right? Oh. right? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so now, so next part. So how would we write this using interval notation? So we've got two parts of this, right? We've got this part. So how would I say that? How would I say X is less than or equal to negative 4? Okay, but is greater than one. using interval notation. Oh. 
parentheses, right? Comma. Negative four. Brackets, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, how about the other one? Brackets. I don't. I, I'm so bad at writing infinity symbols. Parentheses one, comma, infinity. Okay. So the question is, how do we link those? So the way we say or, and this is, you know, I, I'm going to be very specific with you guys. So when you're talking about interval notation, intervals involve sets of numbers. And so the way we write that is with the union symbol instead of a B. So it's like big U. It oh, got yeah. worse. Okay. It got harder. Okay, make sense? So solving or inequalities is really simple. To solve or inequalities, all you do is you just solve each part individually and for both. And you link them with you know the logical way of linking them. So let's look at a couple examples. So how about something like this? What am I going to do to the I mean, left inequality involves what two steps? Okay, subtract so four. And divide by three. And that's going to give me 3x is less than or equal to 6. Divide by 3, so I get x is less than or equal to 2. OK, so there's part of my answer, right? OK, or on the other side, what's my only step here? And so I get x is OK, and so if I wanted to write those together. Wait, is that 9? Nine, you're right. You're right. Yes. <laughs> and so to link those together because it's. Hey, let me get. I, I know it's Friday, but I, I want to kind of get through this. I, I I wouldn't mind having either a little time for you to work, or we might even throw in a little kind of fun thing to think about over the weekend. But we got to get there. So I want everybody with me, please. So there's my or symbol. There we go. Now, if I want to graph this, what am I doing? Close circle at negative 2? Ray to which direction? Oh, sorry. What am I doing? You're right, positive 2. Wait, I did that too. Why did I do that? And then, to the left, okay, and then, okay, so where's that go? Nine. Nine. Open circle. Open circle to the right. Okay. Good. And if I want to write this using interval notation. Um, negative infinity comma two. Bracket. Bracket. Uh, and then parentheses. Hold up. U. 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 Parentheses. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay, let's try one more. Yeah, I just I want to point something out with this one. These aren't I know these aren't really difficult, but I just want I want to point something out with this. So let's let's work on the first inequality, the left one. What do I do to isolate that x? Multiply by, by, no. by, by, negative by negative 3. Okay. So that's going to eliminate the fraction from the left side, right? So I'm going to end up with, whoops, end up with 8 minus x. Is ah, okay. You've got to flip it. Very good. Okay, because I'm dividing by a negative. I've got to flip that around. Very good. What do I get on the other side? Negative 15. 5 over correct. Now, what am I doing to both sides? Multiplying. Multiplying by, so what do I get? 15. Okay. So now what? Uh, yes, subtract the 8, negative x is greater than or equal to. Okay. Okay, so I got two options here. So what's. Did I forget something? No, no. Okay. So I've got what, what's, give me one sequence of two steps I could do to get the answer. Subtract, subtract eight, flip. Okay, I could subtract eight and then divide or multiply by negative one. 
Right, same thing. That works. Oh, what's another sequence? You could oh. add x and okay. subtract 15. Good. You could add x and subtract 15. About six of one, half a dozen the other. I actually, I mean, not, not, not what this word. I would add the x and subtract 15, first of all. So it's easier, it's easier visually to move stuff uh, rather than having to remember to flip that inequality. But I mean, with you guys, it doesn't matter. Well, no, you don't, because if I add x to this side, inequality is staying put, and I'm just pushing yeah. the x over to that side. Yeah, but what do you mean when you have to write it reverse the, yeah, 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 you're right. Good point, good point, yeah. So, so let's do that, doing that in our head, what are we going to get for an answer? You guys can power through that, do the little mental math. What am I going to get? Okay. Okay, makes sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, how about the other side? How about over here? What's the first step? Multiply by negative 2. Okay, let's multiply, and I'm going to write that out. Let's multiply both sides by negative 2. That's fine. We can clear those fractions. That's fine to do. I like that. And so we'll distribute through both sides a negative 2. Okay, so on the left side, what's that going to give me? Uh, negative 10 plus 3x. It's pretty clever, isn't it? Right? So what do we do to the inequality? We're going to flip it. On, the other, on this side, we're going to get 2. two. Okay? But now we've got a positive x on the left. That's a good idea. Okay. Last two steps. Add 10. First, right, and then divide by three. X is not equal to X is greater than X is four. Greater. greater than four. Okay, so we've got an OR statement here, right? Um, write this as here's my first answer. If I write that compound OR inequality uh, using inequality notation. Uh, what's this going to look like if I graph this thing? What am I? Negative 7, solid dot to the left. At positive 4, I'm open dot to the right. It doesn't matter that they cross through. Say it again. Oh, they don't. They don't. Yeah, now if they did cross, okay, so hold that thought. Hold that thought. We'll, we'll, we'll look at an example where what if they did cross? Okay. Uh, but let's finish this one first. So interval notation. How would I write that using interval notation? Infinity. Negative seven bracket. Good. Union. Infinity. Okay. So now let's hypothetically. What if we got an answer like this? What if we got an answer like, it was a good question was asked, what if we got an answer like x is less than or equal to positive 7 or x is greater than 4? Okay. So what would that look like if I were to graph it? So let's do this part in red. X is less than or equal to 7. What's that look like? Uh, seven. Close circle. Left. Wait. Left. Yeah, left. Okay. Then, Let's open. do this part in blue. What's that going to look like? Open, open dot, right. right. Is this the area that's halfway overlap? So they overlap. So if the or inequalities overlap, what's the, what's the answer? All real numbers. All real numbers, right? Because the entire real number line is shaded. Okay. How about this one? What if I had something like, give you another example. What if I got an answer hypothetically like x is less than 4 or, I should use the sum symbol right, 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 or x is less than 7. Okay, this is a little tricky. Think about this. So there's 4, there's 7, 
there's seven. Let's do this one in red. So open dot going left. Open dot going left. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> so what's the answer? No, there is a solution. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. X is less than seven. Because it's an OR statement, right? An OR statement is a union statement. They don't both have to be true, just either one of them has to be true. So either one of them is true if X is less than seven. Right? Yeah. So saying it this way is not simplified, is it? Right? We can say that more simply by just saying X is less than seven. Okay, make sense? Okay. Uh, let's look at type two. So type two. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to give you one more, yeah. one more thing that, kind of just for you guys. This is not on the notes, but just so you hear this, these words. This is kind of nice for you to hear. An OR statement is what we call in math. That's a disjunctive statement. So I'm betting some of you are going to go on a lot further in math. At some point, you're going to hear that that terminology. Disjunctive is an OR statement. So an AND statement is what we call a conjunctive inequality. An AND statement says something different. Now, what if what if we okay, let's try another one here? Raise your hand if you are taller than if you are if your height is greater than or equal to five ten. Okay. Raise your hand if your height is less than or equal to 6, 1. Okay? Raise your hand if your height is greater than or equal to 5, 10 and less than or equal to 6, 1. Okay, there's a subsection of people here. Only the people that are bracketed by those two are going to have their hands up, right? See what I'm saying? So oh, an and statement yeah. by both oh, of them. Yes, and. So which is more restrictive, an AND statement or an OR statement? Yes. An AND statement. Okay. So if how would we how would we write this inequality then? X is what? And, and I, I can almost guarantee you're going to say this wrong the first time. I'm going to show you how to say this right. How would we say that statement? X greater than or equal to negative two less than four five. That's correct. You said it right. Okay, when you read that, you always want to start in the middle, right? You don't want to start, so the way we would write that, we would start in the middle, and we would say x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 5. Now, there's a tendency, and you kind of sound a little bit goofy when you say this in a math environment. If you were to read this and say negative 2 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than, see, that's, that's not the way you want to do it. You always, with a, with a compound and inequality that's written this way, which is the proper way to write it. And, and inequalities are just custom built for writing where you, you, you kind of push both inequalities into one nice statement. You've got the lower boundary on the left and the upper boundary on the right, and that's going to match the number line very precisely, right? You always start in the middle. You'd say, we want to define what's going on with x. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2, which is equivalent to saying x is bounded on the left by negative 2 and less than 5. So it's bounded on top by 5, right? You want to say x is what? It's defined by this lower limit and this upper limit, okay? How would we write that using interval notation? Bracket. Negative 2, comma, 5. Good. So, Brent, does that make sense? I can't. I can't. Oh, okay. So, so then the the example and and this isn't this isn't really wrong to say it this way, but we could say like. We could write it like this, but I'm going to show you that there's a better, more condensed way. We could write it as x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and, that's an and symbol, or is, is a b, and is just a tipped over b. Okay. And 
x is less than 5, you know, we would write that instead this way. Okay, that's a more compact way of saying it. So if the and inequality is written out, you can solve each part separately, which we very rarely would ever do. I'm going to give you a couple examples on the assignment like that. But almost always, when we're actually working with compound and inequalities, as we will when we start to solve absolute value inequalities, we're going to start with, with a compound and inequality that's written with three parts, and we'll solve it that way, which makes it pretty easy. Okay? So let's look at a couple examples. Right, this is one that's actually written out with and, or I could even have the symbol for and. So what do you think I do here? Uh, um, each, right? We're just going to solve each inequality separately. So let's do this one first. So I get 2x is greater than negative 12. So x is greater than Negative six. How about over here? Add two. Add two. Divide by eight. So eight x is less than thirty-two. Divide by eight, and I get x is less than four. Okay. So then we've got the statement. We could say, and this is not as good. We could say x is greater than negative six, and x is less than 4, but let's say that more elegantly. Let's say that using a single compound inequality where they're joined. So, negative 6 is less than x. Well, no, oh, I would say x is greater than negative There you go. Good. And less than 4. And less than 4. There you go. Okay, that's a much better way to do it, right? And, and if we were to graph that, what's it look like? It looks like... Hollow dot on negative 6. Hollow dot, hollow dot, hollow dot on 4, and, and the line between together. There it is, right? If we were to write that using interval notation, it's super easy with interval notation, right? What's it look like with interval notation? Um, four. Right. All right. Okay, let's just compare that to. Something like that. Actually, let's, see, let's get a little tough. How about something like that? We'll just skip that other example. You, you don't need to So now we've got them joined using it's a compound and inequality, written all as one three part inequality. What do I do to isolate the x here? Remember doing this step? Multiply by two. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to treat all parts at the same time, right? So whatever we did when we execute a step here, we're executing that algebra step for all three parts. So the first step was, say it again. Multiply by negative 2. Multiply by negative 2. So if I multiply by negative 2, what am I getting here? 10. Positive 10. What am I getting here? Uh, negative 12 minus. What am I getting here? 4. OK, uh, good. OK, here's, there's the key. Because I'm multiplying by a negative, let's make a note of that. To so go from here down to here. We're multiplying by negative 2. So if I multiply by negative 2, I must flip around both of those inequalities, right? Okay, last step. Add what? 12. Or the last step. Subtract 12. So the 12s cancel, I get what? Negative 2. And negative negative x and negative 8. And then last step. Divide by negative 1. Okay, divide now. I would say in that situation, you could divide by negative 1, but it's easier to multiply by negative 1. And it's, it seems like a minor issue, but later on you'll thank me for stressing that. When we start getting into bigger, battery problems, it's a lot easier to think about multiplying both sides by negative. It's a real common thing we do in math. Whenever we're, we want to change the signs of all terms in the equation. Okay? So then if we multiply by negative 1, what's our final answer? So over here we're going to get 
two. And then is greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to. We've got to flip that sign. X. And that shouldn't have been an equal to, should it? Let's fix that. Okay, so there's our answer, right? And if we want to graph that, obviously we're just getting a solid dot at 2, open dot at 8, and we're connecting them, right? Okay, what would happen, what if, I'm going to give you a slightly different one. What if we just, we found ourselves in this situation where we had something like, negative 12 on this side, I had a negative 3x, and I have a positive 9. Okay, what's my, what's my algebra step? Multiply by negative 3. No. Divide, divide by negative 3. Okay. So I can divide each of these through by negative 3, which is going to give me a positive 4, right? It's going to give me an x, and it's going to give me a negative 3. And because, what do I have to do? Flip it. I'm dividing by negatives, so I have to flip that around. Okay, is that a good way to leave my answer? It's not. Defend your answer. What's a, what's a, what's a better way to write this? Okay, I want to I want to flip the whole thing. Imagine that I wrote this on a glass slide, and I'm going to take the glass side and slide and just do that with it. Right? So we're going to end up with the negative 3 over here, the positive 4 over there, and the x in the middle. And what's our relationship? Well, we know x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and x is less than 4. That's much better. Why? Because it's in the order of Okay, it's going in numerical order, so it matches the real line. Right? So that's now look what happens when we graph this thing now. When we graph this thing on the real line, Here's negative 3. There's positive 4. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so when we graph this thing on the real line, thanks. Uh, what goes where? What's at negative 3? Uh, open. Okay, closed close dot. dot. Open dot. And look at the correlation. There's our lower limit, there's our upper limit. So we always want to write those kinds of compound inequalities in increasing order. So it will always the these signs will always open to the right will they? Inequalities. Okay? Good. Uh, how about we did some weird examples before, we'll do a couple weird examples now with hands. What if I had this example? What if my solution was x is greater than What if x is greater than 3 and x is less than 1? If I were to graph those inequalities separately, what would they look like? This one is red. There's 3. Wouldn't it just be x's? What's the solution? No solutions, right? How come? <coughs> okay, there's no intersection, right? There's no intersection. It wouldn't matter on the or. It wouldn't matter on the or, right? Because an or is a union, but it, but it, an and conjunctive inequality is an intersection, isn't it? It's an intersection of two sets. It's where they overlap. It's where both statements are true simultaneously, and these two never overlap, so that would be no solution. Okay, let's change it slightly. What if we said x is greater than 3 and x is greater than 1? Then the x is greater than 1. Right? X is less than 1. X is greater than 3 and x is greater than 1. When is that true? No, it would it just be x is greater than 3? Yeah. Yeah, how come? Because it's also greater than 1. Okay, good. You can be, there are, there are counterexamples where I could be greater than 1, but not greater than 3, like 2, for example. Right? 2 would satisfy that inequality, but not that one. So if we were to graph these inequalities together, oh. 
See what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's do this one in red. Let's do this one in blue. Where's the only place where those overlap completely? Yeah, the, the, this, you, you really got to go to college to learn how to do this, but uh, to make this really vivid here, blue plus red gives you purple, right? So there's the perception. There's it, right? <laughs> All right, so here's what I'd like you to do. Then for today, would you please, I think we got time. I'm not, we won't worry about the Moodle today. I'll put that up like after school today. There are, on your on your assignment, you'll see there's on your sheet. What I did here, and you guys, I'm kind of making this up as I go, so tell me if this is useful. But what I did here is I left room for the ones we did in class for you to kind of fill in as we go along. Two and five, the ones that have boxes around them. Yeah. Two and five on the first page, and eight and 11 on the second page. Those are the ones I'd like you to do and check. And then the other ones, I just put the solutions on there for your benefit. So you just look at them. Right. Okay. That makes sense? I know this stuff isn't that complicated, but as we go further along, I thought it might be a good format. So check in with me, check these, check in with me, I'll give you credit for them. Okay, so I've gotten ahead of myself and did the or, but I corrected it for me. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, just check them right there and see if they're, if they're yeah, check them right there.